So, so far we've been considering what happens when a light ray goes from a less dense medium such as air into a more dense medium such as glass. Let's consider now what happens when the light ray comes from the more dense medium and passes into that less dense medium. So, for example, we have a light ray which is travelling through glass and it passes through the glass to get to the air. Well, in this case, Snell's law holds as well. So one way that we can write Snell's law is n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. Let's consider now the light ray travelling from the glass into the air. We'll consider glass to have a refractive index of 1.5 and air to have a refractive index of 1. So we can write that sine theta of the angle in air is equal to 1.5 times sine theta 2, say, where theta 2 is the angle of it makes in the glass, so the angle of incidence inside the glass. Now for small angles where theta 2 is around about less than 30 degrees, say, this is easy to solve. You can just solve it in your calculator and get the angle of refraction as the light goes into the air from the glass. But when theta is equal to 42 degrees, something happens. At this point, when we do 1.5 times sine theta 2, we get 1. And so the angle of refraction is equal to 90 degrees. And so what happens then is as the beam comes out of the medium, it's refracted to such an extent that it actually travels along the boundary between the glass and the air. So this angle is called the critical angle. So all different mediums have different critical angles. The critical angle is given by 1 is equal to n sine theta times the critical angle. So what we have here is a light source and some fibre optic cables. Now these look, might look a bit familiar to you if you have Christmas decorations like this. So we can put these fibre optic cables on our light source and you can see the little pinpricks of light at the end of the fibre optic cables. So this is because most of the light travels all the length along the fibre optic cables as it can't escape because it hits the edges of the cable at an angle greater than the critical angle for the cable until it gets to the end at which point the light can move out of the cable. So this is how we send signals along fibre optic cables. OK, so the question is, diamond has a refractive index of 2.42. Part A, what is the critical angle for diamond? Part B, identify for which of these diagrams the light will be refracted out of the diamond. And part C, the diamond blocks are now submerged in water with a refractive index of 1.33. For which blocks will the light escape the diamond now? Okay, so for part A, we just need to use our formula for critical angles, which tells us that 1 is equal to the refractive index times sine of the critical angle. So we can rearrange this for the critical angle. We've got that the critical angle is equal to the inverse sine of 1 on n. So this is equal to the inverse sine of 1 over 2.42 and solving that one on the calculator we get that it's equal to 24.4 degrees. So we can then use that to answer part B where we need to identify for which of these diagrams here the light leaves the prism. So the light will leave the prism if it hits it at an angle less than the critical angle. So diagram 1 the angle of incidence is 20 degrees, which is less than 24.4, so yes, it will leave. For 2, the angle is 30 degrees, and that's bigger than 24.4 degrees, so it is going to be totally internally reflected, so no, it will not leave it. And for 3, again, 80 degrees is bigger than 24.4, so it's not going to be able to leave the diamond in this case. Okay, now part C says that we now submerge the, these blocks in water, which has a refractive index of 1.33. So the refractive index for air 
was equal to 1.00. So we've now got a bigger refractive index outside. So now we're asked for what, um, from which of the blocks will the light escape. Okay, so we'll need to go back to look at how we came up with this critical angle. And for the critical angle, if we've got water out there, then we'll need the refractive index of water times sine theta of water is equal to the refractive index of diamond times sine theta of diamond. And the critical angle will be when this angle in water is equal to 90. So that will be n water times sine 90, so n water times 1. n water is equal to the refractive index of diamond times sine theta of the diamond, and this will be for the critical angle. So theta d will equal to the inverse sine of, in this case, 1.33 over 2.42. So you can see up, it's very similar to this one, except that we have 1.33 here instead of one. And so when we solve that on the calculator, we end up with 33.3 degrees. Okay, so now it can come out for one because 20 is less than 33. It can come out for two because 30 is less than 33 but it still will be trapped within the diamond for case three. Okay, so that's how we solve that problem. Now, one thing that's worth noting is when it hits it at 80 degrees, it actually gets reflected back off this boundary like this, and this angle here is 80 degrees. So this is known as total internal reflection. So total internal reflection occurs when we hit the boundary at an angle greater than the critical angle.